Sound design. So how do you use lateral aspect ratio to place a point source speaker? You've probably thought about using lateral aspect ratio to space front fills or maybe even space mains, but what about speaker placement? So that's what I want to talk about in today's video, and this isn't real so much a how-to as it is kind of an investigation. I just want to share with you some interesting geometry that I've been looking at over the last few days based on um, some questions that a student has been sending me. Okay, so I started working on this because a few years ago I made this calculator and unfortunately it's just a little bit ugly and not very user friendly. I have used it on several designs and it's I found it really helpful, but I never put it together in a package that really other people could understand and use. I did give it to a few students. One of the students messaged me recently and said, hey, how do I use this? And I tried to explain it to him, but I realized that this calculator seems like there's a lot going on and really there's not. So let me close this and uh, go back to this design. So if you've never heard of lateral aspect ratio, um, it is commonly used to space front fills because it describes the horizontal coverage when you know speaker depth. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's calculate the lateral aspect ratio of this speaker here. So I know that this speaker has a horizontal coverage width of 100 degrees. And so to find the lateral aspect ratio, I just need the formula. So I'll just paste that in here. And now I can see that I have a lateral aspect ratio of 1.53. So this is not a video in how to calculate this. Um, you can really just find this in tables in places like Bob McCarthy's book, Merlin Van Veen's training, things like that. So how you would normally use this number is you would take the number 1.53 and you would multiply it by the distance from this speaker to the audience and then that would give you the coverage width across here. So if, for example, you knew that this distance was 10 meters, then you would multiply 10 by 1.53 to get 15.3 meters across this audience here. But that's not exactly how we're going to use it. We're going to find the ideal distance from this audience plane to the speaker so we can help use lateral aspect ratio to figure out where we should place this speaker. And that's pretty simple. All we need to do is instead of multiply, we'll divide. So to find the ideal distance, we'll take the width of our audience. So let's find that first. So the width of our audience is 12 meters. So this is our audience here. And I just look at the properties and I can see it says 12 meters right here. So the width is 12 meters. So the ideal distance would be this width divided by the lateral aspect ratio instead of multiplying. Now I can see the ideal distance is 7.83. So let's go over here. Let's look at the left view for a second. And I'm going to draw in a circle centered around this microphone right here because this is the center of our audience. And now you can see a circle here encompassing the entire audience centered right here and at every point on the circle, it is 7.53, right? 7.83 meters away, okay? To take a look at this, let's look, let's put a speaker at the top here. So instead of looking at this speaker first, let's look at the speaker at the top and let's move to a top view. Let's do a prediction of this speaker at four kilohertz. Now I have the SPL settings at a resolution of one dB per color division. So we can just count these and we can say, okay, if we start here, then this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can see that lateral aspect ratio describes a width of coverage with six dB of attenuation. And we say, great that meets our goals of minimum variance. We would like to keep the level variance across this audience to within 
60B. Here's the problem. Most people do not put speakers above the audience unless you're designing an overhead system, you know, a ceiling speaker system. Most of the time we want the sonic image to come from in front of the audience. So how do we define that? Here are some lines that I drew at 45 degrees. So let's define this 45 degree line here as basically the threshold between a sound that sounds like it's coming above the audience and a sound that sounds like it's coming in front of the audience. So let's say what we're doing here is we're creating some limits, as you can see. So a big example would be, you know, we're not going to put speakers below the audience and we probably don't want to put speakers behind the audience. We want to put the speakers somewhere up in this area. Where exactly that is, is, is what we're going to be talking about now. So can it be anywhere along this purple radius here? Well, what would happen if we put a speaker up here? Let's take a look at that. Let's go back to this um, isometric view. And I'll just clear this out and I'll, and I'll just draw on the screen here. Because um, you guys are probably familiar with the fact that most of the time we are creating these asymmetrical relationships with the audience, right? Because if we put a speaker up here, then we know that the loudspeaker is going to make this kind of a coverage shape that goes out this way, right? So we're going to have narrow coverage up here, and then it's going to get wider and wider as it gets back into the audience. So now the question is, if this is the ideal distance, then what is the minimum distance we're going to allow as the speaker gets lower and lower? What's the minimum distance to give us, you know, a, a coverage width that we like here? So the level of error that I am going to say that we are going to accept is a total of 6 dB. So let's say that we'll accept an error of 3 dB in this way and 3 dB in this way for a total of six. I didn't make this up. <laughs> this is something that I got from uh, attending a workshop with Marilyn Van Veen. We were talking about this exact problem and, and we said, okay, well, if we don't want to be undercovered and we don't want to be too much overcovered, then what is the minimal allowable error? And he recommended six decibels. So that's what I'm going with here. Okay, so let's go back to our calculations here. If we know what the ideal distance is, then how do we figure out what the minimum distance is? So let's put that down here. Let's say we want to get to the minimum distance. And we know that that's going to be a function of the same thing, right? Width divided by lateral aspect ratio, but we need to know a new width. What is this minimum width here across the front of the audience? And so let's call that minimum width. So how do we calculate minimum width? Well, it's going to be some percentage of our width here, of this 12 meter width. What percentage? Well, we said 6 dB total, so that's 3 dB on each side. So what is the linear value of three decibels? Well, we can calculate the linear value of three decibels like this. So this would be 10 raised to the power of three decibels divided by 20. And if you're not familiar, so we, so we get 70% here, right? And then we would put linear in here, and now we get um, 8.5. So 8.5 meters is 70% of 12. If you're not familiar with this um, math right here, then what you probably are familiar with is the 20 log formula. So 20 log times our linear value here, there's our three decibels. Okay, so it's just this formula in reverse to get the linear value. Okay, so 70% is three decibels. So that gives us our minimum width. That gives us our minimum distance. 
of 5.5. So let's draw another circle here. I'll go back to the left view. That's this red circle here. And where this red circle now, so now we can see we don't want to get any closer than this minimum distance. Otherwise the coverage will be too narrow at that front row. And so now we have an answer to our question. Where do we put the speaker? How low can we put the speaker? Well, it's where this red circle and this purple circle intersect. That's the lowest height where we still have our ideal distance to the center of the audience and our minimum distance to the front of the audience. Now, you might be wondering about maximum distance. I'm not going to go through and calculate it, but you can do it the exact same way. So you can look at 3 dB um, expanding the width, and then we would get a bigger circle, which you can see here in blue. We'll call this the max circle. But let me get rid of that. But what I'll point out to you here, so here's our max distance from the back. Here it is intersecting with the purple circle, but you can see that it's lower than the minimum. So I decided that we can ignore it. And I think it's going to be that way most of the time. So let's get rid of this max distance. So now we just have one place to focus on. So now here's what's interesting. What if we get rid of every possibility that doesn't work. So let's cut all this that we don't want to use at the top. We don't want to put a speaker in the back. We don't want to put a speaker below the ground. And all of this is too low. So then in the end, we're just left with a tiny bit here where we actually want to put the speaker. And just for fun, I decided to draw that out. So this is... So here in green is what's left over. And if I hide everything else, then here in green, and I can even rotate this around a little bit, you can see <laughs> this is the area that satisfies all these conditions that we set up. And you might be thinking, well, this seems really conservative. This seems kind of extreme. But this is, you know, helpful to understand that if you want to meet, try to meet these kind of conditions, it can be tough to do with an audience this wide and this, a speaker uh, uh, that has these values of this horizontal and vertical coverage. Um, and this is why we often want to divide up the audience plane um, or use an array with multiple speakers, that kind of stuff. Because right away, uh, I know this is a really ugly spreadsheet here, but I was just using this to try to work out a bunch of these calculations. So if you just focus on this down here, the height, of the speaker. And we have our width and depth here. You can see that we can start playing around with these numbers to see if these will help us at all. So we might say, hey, what if we have an 80 degree speaker instead of a 100 degree speaker? Well, we go, that doesn't help us very much. Okay, so we'll leave it on the 80 degree speaker. What if we go from a width of 12? What if we divide that in half? So we'll use two speakers instead of one. Okay, now we've gone from six meters down to 4.5 meters. So now we're getting somewhere. So if we start dividing this up and, and making it smaller and smaller, then maybe we can find something that's acceptable to us. So I don't know what the limitations are. Maybe we have, you know, speaker stands that only go up to three meters. So we have to figure that out. Or maybe we only have a certain kind of, um, a certain coverage angle of speaker. So you can see that these calculations could go in a lot of different ways. Um, but I would invite you to play around with this idea. You can sketch out your design like this, you know, uh, draw a circle that represents your ideal lateral aspect ratio, and then draw another circle that represents the minimum. And I think pretty quickly you'll find exactly where you can put that speaker. Or maybe it'll just be a research exercise and you say, hey, we only have stands that go up this high anyway. So we just know that, you know, this area here is going to be a little bit uh, undercovered. This area back here is going to be overcovered. You know, this is just the situation that we're in. So thanks for taking this walk down the road of lateral aspect ratio with me. If you think this is helpful and you want to see me turn this into, you know, some kind of a calculator, let me know what you want and like maybe we can figure out how to build something together. Um, and if you see some way that this method could be improved or maybe something that I did incorrectly here with the geometry of the math, please let me know because I'm always trying to improve my methods. All right. Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.